Um, no one's going to do an intro, so I'll tell you all about myself. Um, made in Africa, born in Fremantle, Perth spent the first 10 years of my life on Bougainville Island in Papua New Guinea, and now I live in Brisbane, mostly. Um, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, my name is Lee Chantel. I've run a website called VivaLeVegan.net for 10 years, 10th anniversary right about now, so yay me. And um, I've been vegan for 19 years in January. So I'm just going to go over a few things. Today I'm speaking about diets, ethics and veganism. So how many people in the room are vegan? Oh, good. How many people want to be vegan? Yeah, good. Slight hand up. Who, who doesn't really care much about the vegan stuff? Okay, well, I've got a receptive audience at least. That's good. So, I might just start with my story about how I became vegan in the first place. And it started with being vegetarian first. So, when I was in year 10 at school, um, we used to have leg of lamb every night. Well, not every night, sorry, on Saturday nights for dinner. And it was roast leg of lamb. I knew it came from a lamb because it was called a leg of lamb, but I didn't really make too much of a connection other than that. And one night I said to my mum, there was a particular piece that my sister and I both liked. And I said, oh, what, what is that piece of the lamb? She said, it's the Achilles tendon. And I looked down at my own Achilles tendon and I went, whoa, I've got one of those too. And I could no longer distance myself or disconnect myself from that anymore. So I understood the life that I was and the death that I was about to consume. And so after that, I didn't consume any more red meat. Um, and then it took me a few years to find out more information about veganism and vegetarianism. And I became, vegan, I became vegetarian first because I didn't want anyone to die. And I soon found out about the egg industry and the dairy industry. And I'm not sure if many of you know, but those industries are sometimes worse than death. And so these animals are used and abused continuously and just for the sake of someone having some creamer in their coffee or just an egg for an omelette and things like that. So I found out through groups, so I'm, I'm from Brisbane, so Animal Liberation in Queensland and Vegetarian Vegan Society of Queensland. And I found out information from those groups and that's what made me become vegan in the first place at the beginning of 1997. And um, it, back in 1997, it was quite a lot different than this. We didn't have um, vegan festivals. We didn't have all these vegan goods. Um, I was lucky to get soy milk at the supermarket. And I'm sure a lot of you know how many more products that we have at supermarkets now. There's just so many. And it was a great and exciting time when you go to a health food store and you get dark chocolates. And that's about it. I think well, we had one brand of ice cream at that time, and I think there was a biscuit as well. That was about it. And so, I'm sure, how many people here have been vegan for over five years? What about over 10 years? So I've got a few people who understand how massive things have become nowadays. And um, the things that I've noticed the most are that people are using the term vegan here and there, and maybe that the term vegan should not be used, and maybe the term plant-based should be used because a lot of people seem to not understand the ethical issues involved with the vegan lifestyle. And I'm not talking about a vegan diet, I'm not talking about a plant-based diet. I'm actually talking about the reasons why people become vegan that have nothing to do with how hot you look, have nothing to do with um, how much you compress um, on the whatever the weights are, that might not be the wrong um, term. And um, so I just want to talk more about that. I've been interested in vegan health for quite a while and I actually studied um, naturopathy, nutrition and Western herbal medicine. I, I graduated from that about 10 years ago as well. So I actually know what I'm talking about when I talk about the health aspects of things and there's a hell of a lot of people online that do not. And one of the issues that I have um, with how some people promote veganism is that it's a cure-all. Now, it's really not. And um, for a lot of people, if you have a mainstream diet where you're not eating very well, you're not eating a lot of vegetables, you're not eating grains, you're not eating things like that, 
to go to a vegetarian diet is a really great thing and you can lose weight and you can be healthy and you can change a lot of dietary issues and some health issues as well. But if you're eating a diet, a vegan diet, that is high in processed foods, and I'm talking about your fake meat, um, all your gluten-filled stuff, um, some of the great treats that are around here today, if that is like a main part of your diet, you probably will not lose weight when you become vegan. And there's a lot of people who go vegan originally just so they can lose weight and they find out that they don't and some of them even put on weight. So for a lot of people to say, go vegan, lose weight, is probably not a really good thing to say. Um, after I finished studying, I launched um, a calendar, so a vegan calendar. I'd always wanted to launch vegan books and I thought, oh, calendar's gonna be easy, it's just 12 breakfast. I can do that. So that was the first time that I did that was about this time 10 years ago. I had three calendars and then I also launched a website, vivalavegan.net. And how many people know my website, vivalavegan.net? Good. Should be more, but we'll work on that. Um, and so at the time there was a lot of vegetarian and um, animal liberation and vegan societies that had websites but there really wasn't anything else like, like mine around. So, and that, that's weird if you've seen how many of the vegan blogs in particular there are nowadays. So it's hard to imagine for some people. And over time this grew into a vegan community. So I've got a lot of different information on there, a hell of a lot of content. So I've got recipes, videos, blogs, articles, interviews, podcasts, eBooks, print books, and a lot more. And I'm just actually working on a vegan athletes book. So I've interviewed over 130 um, vegan athletes from all over the world, from Olympians just to people who like to work out on the weekends and personal trainers. And I've learned a lot about a lot of things like that. And it's really interesting how many different people have chosen veganism from a lot of different aspects and the reasons that they go vegan. And um, this is, when I first went vegan, for a lot of us who've been vegan for over, say, 10 or 15 years, a lot of people went vegan originally for a lot of animal issues and animal ethics, animal rights, things like that. There was a lot of people who did go vegan for the health aspects, and there still is a lot of people who do that. And um, I think that it's really great how many products are around, how many new businesses and how many shops are around. I think that's really positive. But I think somehow we all need to work at promoting the core values or the core ethics of the movement instead of just the high carb, low fat, righty rah vegans that I seem to see quite a lot. Now, um, if you have a look online, how many people on Instagram? What about how many people on YouTube or watch YouTube videos? Have you, I'm not sure if you've seen the amount of vegan videos that are on there. Um, what sort of things do these people do on these videos or on the, the posts on Instagram? Yell out something. Promote health. Promote health, yeah. In what way? Um, if they claim it's a healthier, healthier lifestyle, see the feel, like, and so on. Mm -hmm. And how would they promote it? Like, talk about it, show their yeah. bodies off? Recipes. Yeah. Recipes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I agree. Anyone else want to add to that? That works. They say that diabetics can reduce the amount of insulin they take by 55% if they follow the same diet. It's important. It's important. We can break it. Yes. Yes, definitely. Plant based diet is very good for diabetes type 2. Um, and. Um, so a lot of people um, online are, sh are promoting the vegan diet and I think maybe focusing on maybe themselves or the way that they look and how that, that changes things. And maybe that's getting away from the core ethics of it. And um, especially in the mainstream media, and you know I have issues with mainstream media as it is, but in particular with vegan um, lifestyle and the vegan diet, the vegan diet seems to have a lot of attention, maybe not the vegan lifestyle. For example, how many people know Beyonce is vegan? Is that 
Everyone know about that? Beyonce is supposedly a vegan because she did a 30 day vegan challenge and she, she's one of the owners of a home delivery service that um, sells vegan products in, I think it's New York. How many people knew Miley Cyrus was a vegan? Yeah, see, the difference between those two is that Beyonce did it to lose weight and Miley Cyrus actually has looked, has a lot of information online. One of my favourite music writers actually, Amanda Petrucic, she wrote a really good interview with her and um, she, Miley actually talks about how she felt when one of her dogs was attacked by coyotes and how she felt this connection to the dogs and how she didn't want anyone to get hurt and that's what made her go vegan and she writes these songs about her fish that died and things like that and she seems to have more of an idea of maybe the animal reasons of veganism I don't necessarily listen to either of those people but I just love finding out what the media like really talks about and represents so um, I think one of the biggest issues with media or vegan um, sort of scene in general at the moment is that the term vegan has been completely watered down. And with that, I mean that veganism is not just a diet. So um, for myself and for a lot of others, it's a set of ethical guidelines that we commit to because we agree with whatever those guidelines are. And I definitely agree that people can come to veganism for many different reasons and can, you know, find out other different reasons along the way. And so for me, myself, I went vegan for animal rights issues and ethics, and it's my way of leading by example to promote peace, love and compassion to the world. And I did that because I don't agree with using, abusing or exploiting any animals whatsoever. And in case you're not aware, a vegan is someone who does not consume any animal flesh, and this includes sea creatures, which some people still don't seem to understand why. Um, that includes animal secretions, which is dairy products, and um, includes animal products like eggs, and also byproducts. So honey is not vegan. If you're consuming um, honey and exploiting the insects, that's not a vegan product. And so, as a vegan, by what you're you're consuming um, to eat, you're using your fork to vote. So, whatever you're you're choosing to do, that's a really great way to tell people that you do or you do to do or do not support their company, their business, or what they stand for. And um, we can use this in many other areas as well, not just food. So, for example, clothing. Um, whether you do or don't wear wool, um, wool and silk and leather, for example, and also cosmetics and household goods, like things that are not tested on animals, things that include beeswax, lanolin, just some examples. And also, as vegans, we don't really support events or places that actually would exploit animals, and this can include places like zoos, circuses, aquariums, or adeos, stuff like that. And um, there's so many reasons people become vegan, and I think there's so many reasons why people can stay vegan too. So if you only know of one aspect of veganism, say the health aspect or the environmental aspect or the animal aspect, I really encourage you to do some more research to the other things and to always continue to learn about things. And I hope that's what you get from today, if nothing else. And, um, and I know um, a lot of vegans that I know really don't care if what they eat is healthy or not. They just care about whether someone had to die for it or was exploited for it. That's all they care about. And um, I know there's a lot of studies that have been done in the past few years about what actually makes people vegan and what makes people stay vegan. And one of the main things that I get from a lot of these studies is that there's a lot of people who become vegan for all these, a few of those reasons I mentioned before, but the majority of people who stay vegan, and I mean that for over two, anything over two years, is um, for the animal ethical reasons. So um, if you went vegan first for the health aspects or maybe just the dietary aspects, 
I'm sure everyone else here knows how long people stay on diets for. Like diets are a really great long-term sort of commitment for a lot of people. But if you can find other reasons to become vegan, then that's a really great way to stick with these sort of things. And um, there's so many environmental benefits to being vegan, so many health benefits as well. And um, I hope if you don't know these benefits that you really do your research about them as well. And I just like to link everything together. And I, I found, you know, I was interested in feminism before I became vegan. And I found out more about the links between feminism and vegan and animal rights as well. And if you don't know about that, do some research on that. And I also found out more about environmental issues, human rights issues. And for example, you know, for human rights issues, you know, people that work in abattoirs, a lot of them don't have much of a choice, are working in low sort of paid and, um, industries and really not looked after and just horrible work. Like no one really wants to do that sort of work. So you can imagine the choices that these people maybe don't have if they're doing that sort of thing. And um, there's, there's so many other ethics involved in these things as well. So, for example, do you think it's enough just to wear, say, a vegan shoe? Does everyone think that's good? Like, vegan, I've got a nice vegan shoe on my foot today. Where does that come from? Who has made my shoe? How long has it had to travel to get here? Um, how, many, how many people um, were getting paid $2 a week to make my shoe? You know, you have to think about all these aspects. It's a really great step to be vegan. It really is, and it's a really important step, but it's honestly not the only step. It's what I think of as the first step to being really conscious about so many different things in the world. And, you know, the, the vegan products, a lot of the vegan products come from overseas, come from the UK, come from the US, come from Europe. How many travel miles have they taken to get here to you? You know, there's a lot of other things I really hope that you think about and like really do some um, some research into so that you, you don't just, some people get up on their high horse like, I'm vegan, I don't need to care about, you know, um, whether I use plastic or whether I, um, you have 30 minute showers and things like that. But you still do, you know, we all need to care about each other. We all need to work out all these things. And, um, and for me, just all, the, all these issues are just as important. Animal ethics, animal rights was the reason I went vegan, but it's not the primary reason that I am vegan. And I've added lots of things along the way. And so for me, feminism aspects, animal rights aspects, environmental, human rights, and um, you know, I'm really anti-capitalism and things like that. So, you know, some people will say to me, oh, so-and-so, he can't be vegan, he's eating Coca-Cola, he's drinking Coke. And I'm like, well, you know, it's a vegan product, but you know, do you care about the company that these things come from? Some of the vegan products as well, the majority of the companies that now seem to buy all these small vegan companies, um, they're not vegan because they test on animals, for example, some cosmetics. So, um, you know, every time you choose to spend your money, you can choose whether you want to exploit the earth, the people on it and our animal friends, or you can choose to do something good with your money, you can choose to do something with your time. And I honestly think the first step for um, being an ethical person and for being socially responsible is to go vegan. I honestly think that is the first step. I know other people would disagree with that, but for me that's what I think is right. And I think the next step from that is to do your research. So find out as much as you can about everything that you you know, if you're not learning most days of your life, it's going to be a pretty boring life. And there's just so much to learn out there. So find out about the stuff I've mentioned. Where does your food come from? How is it created? How is it sourced? How did products get to you? And what is, what's the packaging used? Um, do the people that work at your favourite restaurant actually get paid? Do they get paid a good living? Do they get looked after? What sort of what sort of um, processes are in place to look after the people that work at these places? Um, who created what you what you used? 
And you know, another really big thing um, is do you agree with the tactics that are used to promote veganism at the moment? I don't. There's a lot of things I really don't agree with at the moment. And um, how can we change that? We need to be getting more information out, factual information, scientifically based information. And we need to get more of that out. And you know, think, think about a lot of different things as well. Just because where you come from, and you know, myself, I'm in quite a privileged position. I can travel, I can speak to people, I speak English, most people understand me. Um, just because what I do is right and I find that it works doesn't mean it's the only way. You know, what, what can you learn from other people, other ages, other cultures? There's so much you can learn from other people. And also, another thing, how can we promote veganism in the most inclusive way so that everyone is included? So it's not just what I see online, which is white middle class people that can afford chia seeds. You know, if you bring it back to the basics, the four basic vegan food staples, fruit and vegetables, nuts and seeds, whole grains, and legumes, beans, and pulses. The majority of those things are really cheap, and you can get them really cheap. So focus on those sort of things, if, if nothing else. Not everyone needs to eat Oreos that are, I think, Nestle brand. Oreos, yeah, that test on animals. It's great to be able to have them, but you know, think about these sort of things. And you know, please, I hope I'm not coming across as judgmental. I encourage everyone to not be judgmental of others as well, because we're all on our own life paths, and we're all in different stages at different times. And I've learned over the past almost 20 years of being vegan that the best way is to to lead by example and to show people and to show them that you're actually committed to something and to be consistent in what you value and the things that you purchase and the things you don't, the things that you support, the things you don't. So focus on being a great example, best example you can be of a vegan and focus on being consistent. And whether you like it or not, you could be the only vegan some people know. So speak well, speak nicely, don't be judgmental, don't yell at them. There's a lot of vegans I've met just recently who said, I, I wouldn't have become vegan, um, I would have become vegan a lot earlier if this person didn't yell at me when I asked them a question 20 years ago or something. So just be really, really careful. And um, I do a lot of social media marketing and a lot of speaking and consulting on a variety of things. And I, um, one of the tips with marketing is to focus on what people need and to focus on what connects you with someone else. So, what are you interested in? What's your biggest interest? In general, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Veganism. Veganism, what aspect of it? Uh, we started off with the environmental side and okay. we've got more into uh, the animal side and now I'm looking at uh, the health aspect. So just on those tips, for example, someone's in inter interested in environmental aspects or they are an environmentalist themselves. Can you give them some facts on a vegan diet and how it's really helpful for the planet and how, you know, using as many resources and things like that. From a health perspective, how you can change type 2 diabetes and a few other health issues. And um, from... Yeah. From the animal aspects, oh, you love your dog, your dog's great, you know, do you realise how close a pig is to a dog? Or, you know, you're comparing animals and just find out the things that people are interested in and then you can find a way to get to those other parts. And, you know, people are interested in gardening, talk about veganic gardening. And um, people are interested in bodybuilding, and you know I've got a heap of friends who are bodybuilders, vegan bodybuilders, and just direct them to, you know, Billy Simmons, um, Ed Bauer, Robert Cheek. You know, there's some really great people who do a lot of good things out there to connect people to. And um, keep in mind that this is like so overwhelming for a lot of people. Like, you know, once you become vegan, you can't learn it. Once you learn these things, you can't not 
do anything about it for me or you can't unsee it, can't unlearn it. So that can be really overwhelming for people and that's why some people only can, can do a small amount of that, can only be vegetarian one day of the week or you know, vegan as much as they can. So you know, just small steps still get to the same direction. So try and be encouraging to people and come from a place of compassion because I think especially because a lot of us seem to interact online and maybe not as much in person anymore that we forget those interactions with people and they're really important. And just, yeah, remember there's someone, a real person in front of you who has, you know, some, you know, might have some barriers to why they can't be vegan or why they don't embrace some of the things that you do. And um, there's always different steps and actions for different people. So you just need to get to know someone first. Uh, focus on education and planting seeds versus just converting people. And focus on engagement versus judgment. And um, I think, like I said before, if you can just be the best version of yourself at every time that you can, and you can do our movement proud, and we need a lot more people like that. And also, one thing to remember that people seem to forget, in particularly online, is that humans are animals too. So we're all loving animals, but we're being mean to each other. So we're humans too, and kindness is always the answer. And um, I just thought if anyone has any questions, I've got maybe one or two questions I could answer. Um, hi, I'm currently studying med science in Sydney, and he developed a course on pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. where they test pharmaceutical animals. So how, as a big person, you treat pharmaceutical drugs and make you help? How does that work? Okay, so um, that, that's a hard one, definitely. And a lot of people can feel a lot of judgment and a lot of pressure to not maybe have pharmaceutical um, products. Um, from a naturopathy perspective, I'm quite anti-pharmaceutical companies in general. I just I like doctors to give me a diagnosis and then I use other ways to treat it. Um, but for some people that say, I know um, some friends of mine who have mental health issues and depression and they need to be having certain um, pharmaceutical um, products to be able to cope with life. So um, if the best way to get through your day and to live and to you know, get on with life is to have those products, then have those products. I remember um, when I was studying as well, um, one of my lecturers uh, we're talking about the um, the pill for girls because it's a really bad thing for females to do from a health perspective. If you're not aware, research that. And she's saying if the worst thing in the world is to get pregnant, then be on the pill. So it just depends what your priorities are, and it's just you know. And I think someone, yeah, I think they're quite um, dr maybe dramatic examples, but yeah, yeah. Does that help? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, feminism and veganism, yeah that's a good one. Um, so well females, mostly cows are used and in particular for creating dairy. So the dairy industry would be a big issue. So if you're for um, human, human rights in general, I would just say feminism. And you want people to be able to choose what they do with their body and in particular what they do with their sexual organs. And um, you've got someone raping slash impregnating um, a cow to create babies because some people don't know um, cows have to be pregnant to produce milk like we do we're mammals same thing if we have a baby to get that baby milk we have to have been pregnant people lose that somehow so that that's a thing that's a big issue and um, that happens regularly over and over and over again and instead of that mother being able to look after its baby, like a, a lot of people want to be able to care for someone they birthed in a lot of cases, um, then that's just taken away from them. And the same process repeats. And then from a male perspective as well, if you look into say the chicks, baby chicks that are born, all the male chicks are killed like that as soon as they're born. So just from human rights and that sort of aspect and for rights for all, for me, they're the issues. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Okay, I think I might wrap that up then. So thank you very much for the engagement and the great questions, everyone, and for um, your attention. Have a look at my website, vivalabigan.net, for more information. Um, for the 10th anniversary, I'm actually about to relaunch it in a month or so, so keep an eye out. And keep an eye out for my Vegan Athletes book. So I hope you learned something and speak to you later.